Welcome to the third in four lectures that walk through a GCSE paper for the Normans. In this question, we will examine how to answer the eight mark write an account question. The question we will be studying is write an account of 1066 following the death of Edward the Confessor. The part in italics is the question stem and does not change the rest of the question is the topic you must focus on. This example clearly asks for a chronological account of events, however there have been instances in the past where the passage of time for this question is less than obvious. In this case you need to show how things evolved or changed over time. The phrase write an account requires you to place events in chronological order and show the key concept of cause and effect in other words how one event led to another. In this case you need to discuss events following the death of Edward the Confessor and essentially you are explaining how Edward's death set off a series of events into motion that resulted in 1066 being the most famous year in English history. Spend one minute considering this question, what were the key events of 1066? This is a very simple chronology of the events of 1066. Harold Godwin's son was crowned King of England on the same day as Edward the Confessor's funeral, after being chosen by the Witten. Then little happens before September since the other two claimants to the throne, Harold Hardrada and William of Normandy need time to prepare their invasion fleet. The first claimant to arrive on English soil is Hardrada, who invades the north of England with a fleet of Vikings. There are two battles in quick succession, Fulford Gate and Stamford Bridge. The following month October, there is the third and final battle at Hastings. It is then another two months before William is crowned King of England on Christmas Day 1066. Now spend one minute considering how each event links to the next. The additions in yellow show how one event links to the next. It is necessary to show these links in order to gain the higher marks, because you are therefore showing a sophisticated chronological understanding. Firstly, Godwin's son breaks his oath of fealty to William by taking the crown for himself and Hardrada sees Godwinson's claim as weak, and so decides to take up the promise of the throne given to his father since the Vikings had briefly ruled England before Edward the Confessor's reign. Godwin's son then has an anxious wait before the first invasion fleet arrives in September. Unfortunately the two northern earls of Edwin and Morcar 
commanders of the Northern Third, are defeated at Fulford Gate, and so Godwin's son must abandon his guard of the southern coast and march north. This meant that his men was exhausted following their victory at Stamford Bridge, which has a direct impact on the sequence of the Battle of Hastings in October. This results in the breakup of the Saxon Shield War. William's victory at Hastings does not guarantee him the throne, though, and he must spend the next two months taking control of key towns in southeast England before he is able to take London and crown himself king. Let's now examine my model answer, where I have highlighted key phrases that show chronological understanding and links between events. In January 1066, Edward the Confessor died without a male heir. On the same day as his funeral, his subregulus, deputy king, Harold Godwin's son, was crowned king. He had the backing of the Witten, or the council. However Harold's position was contested by two rivals. Harold Hardrada, king of Norway, made a Viking claim based on a promise made to his father. William, Duke of Normandy, claimed that Edward had promised the throne to him earlier in his reign. As a consequence, Harold Godwin's son had to defend his position from threats both to the north and south. The next paragraph focuses on how Godwin's son overcame the Viking threat. Hardrada invaded first in September 1066. After the earls of Edwin and Morcar failed to defeat the Vikings at Fulford Gate, Godwin's son marched the southern third over 200 miles north to face the Viking threat outside York. This resulted in a glorious Saxon victory at Stamford Bridge, during which Hardrada was slain alongside most of the Viking army. However, in an unfortunate stroke of luck, it was at this moment that William launched his fleet of 300 ships and landed on the unguarded beach of Pevensey. In this paragraph, I have tried to find the right balance between precise factual detail and showing a breadth of understanding. You will not have time in the exam to go into detail about each of the battles since you would be expected to answer a question like this in approximately 10 minutes. My final paragraph focuses on William's victory over Godwin's son. It reads, Despite their exhaustion, Godwin's son marched the third back to the south coast to form a defensive shield wall on Senlac Hill. As a consequence, they were too weak to hold against William's highly motivated army. Godwin's son was killed in the battle alongside his loyal bodyguards, the House Gals. With no other contestants, William was then able to march to London. He was crowned King of England on Christmas Day 1066, as a symbol to all Saxons that God had blessed him in battle as the true heir to the throne. This paragraph shows an understanding of how William defeated Godwin's son, without going into too much detail. It also uses linking phrases to connect events together. It isn't perfect, though, for example, I forgot to actually name the battle as the Battle of Hastings or say when it took place. Put together, the response looks like this. I normally say that an eight-mark question requires two paragraphs, however the write and account questions need to be divided according to key events and how they lead to the next. In this sense, three sections works best dealing firstly with the immediate consequence of Edward's death, then the Viking invasion following by the Norman invasion. However there will be some questions where two paragraphs will suffice so long as you have included a clear range of evidence. Thank you for watching. Tune into my final video in this short series which walks through the 16 mark historical environment question with a specific focus on Wales and the Norman conquest.